Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. So Tom and Catherine, how do I get a synth to come to my house like it came to your house in your new show? Congratulations, right? Pretty yeah, cool stuff. Just, uh, just just go along to Persona Synthetics and, uh, and order one. Or you can order it online. It'll be delivered to your door. Well, you just bought yours in the shop, right? Didn't I went and order it in the shop, yeah, mm. yeah. I feel like this just became a reality show because you're yeah. like, this is real. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. This new show, Humans, it's a huge, huge hit over in the UK. AMC is now bringing it to the States. I'm sure it's going to be a huge hit here. I saw the first two episodes. I loved it. It's really, really cool because I love this whole AI belief and culture and what may happen. But this show gives such a sense of humanity and a look into how mothers can be replaced and how jealousy can be formed and how artificial intelligence can be good and bad in the household. Talk to me all about your new show now that I pretty much just laid it out there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. I think even if you sort of remove the artificial intelligence aspect to it, if you sort of, if it wasn't even about robots or synthetics, it still sort of it deals with the uh, fact that yeah, mothers can feel like they're replaced in the home, particularly when they're busy working mothers and they're necessarily absent. And it sort of deals with all those modern feelings. And um, and then you know, with the extra uh, element of artificial intelligence, which is very much around the corner, I think it becomes a very sort of current and relevant show. Tom, for you, obviously, we see the the couple and there's a strained marriage, and mm -hmm. your character starts having certain feelings about fulfillment once the synth is in the household. Talk to me about that because it's an interesting dynamic of seeing how tough a relationship can be, but how fulfillment can come from outside areas. Yeah, well, he he runs into it eyes wide shut, Joe. You know, he just doesn't know what he's, what he's in for. And he, it's about him getting to know himself, really, a lot of the show. He, he just doesn't feel... He doesn't think about what he feels most of the time, and and Anita is like this mirror that just holds that held up to everyone in the show, and they start to learn more about themselves from from interacting with her. He's just not expecting that. He thinks it's going to help, you know, our relationship. I think he thinks it's going to buy them time. You know, if we have something in the house that's going to make beautiful gourmet breakfasts and beautiful dinners and do all the chores we're going to have more time to sit down look eye to eye and say honey how have you been yeah. and that isn't actually the reality <laughs> of what what happens because uh, laura feels pretty usurped in her own home it's fascinating because as i mentioned there is a humanity to this when you're reading the script and potentially thinking about doing this role was that what drew you to this role yeah, the, the domestic setting was incredibly attractive about it as well because then you're you're forced to to look at the the issues of AI up close in a domestic setting and and when this is in the corner of your own living room and you're watching it, you know you're looking around you watching it and seeing your own living room and going, wow, oh, this is weird. How do I how do I interact with my iPad and my phone and my, you know, and it makes you think right up close. If this was walking talking in your house, how would I deal with it? And that that's a very attractive thing to see on the page. And the world was so carefully created and feels so much like our own, but crucially removed by one degree. And that's that's a, a really great thing to play. Yeah, I, I mean, you say it's about humanity and I love the way it sort of made you question things like, you know, what is it to be human and what is identity? What is consciousness? What is memory? And it felt like it, it sort of... Uh, uh, started all of those conversations and I just had a, a new baby when I got sent the script and really didn't want it to be any good and was disappointed that it was <laughs> like, I don't want to go was, back to work oh, yet <laughs> so I had to turn up with my breast pump and just get on with it and I'm really pleased that I did because it was so rewarding and so enjoyable yeah. does, it, does it make you question where we're going in society like I watch the first two episodes and I'm thinking to myself what if this does really happen? Are humans replaceable? You know, there's so many questions that go through my mind watching this type of stuff. Did you find yourself having those same types of questions? Yeah, because I don't, I don't think. I, I hope the issue isn't whether we're replaceable. I think the issue is: will we stop talking to each other? Will we stop interacting with we each other? We already have. Tom. We, I we to have. Bring it to you. I know, you know, I'm feeling my phone vibrate in my oh pocket. My and I'm gosh. thinking, I'm thinking, well, what's that? Uh, what, who's emailed me? Eye, me? Like between interviews, that's the first time it's, it's on screen and off honestly. screen. <laughs> no, mm. we're just not engaged with each other <laughs> on, on any level at all. No, it has already happened, hasn't it? Basically, mm. and I think I feel like the 
AI situation is much more imminent than I realised. Um, but maybe the thing is to sort of feel quite excited about it as well as terrified. <laughs> when you see the success you've had in the UK, obviously it's got to be pretty cool. People have really responded. Now you're transitioning to the US and I really hope people do take to the show because again, I do think it has so much heart and is really relevant with what's going on. But it, is it surprising to see that type of success? TV's hit or miss, and then you see success, so you're like, this is pretty cool. Yeah, you can't predict it. We, we knew we were making a great show. The question was whether people would really want to relate to it. And it's fantastic. The, the breadth in age of the audience as well is, is huge. You know, everybody wants to be talking about this and watching a show about this. And that's really exciting. And particularly when young people want to make an appointment with it as well and actually turn it on at the time it's on rather than catching up with it later and going across social media. And they yeah. actually want to turn on their television and watch it at nine o'clock in the evening. And that's great. You see, I'm, yes, because I'm not on social media. So I sort of feel like I'm not really as in touch as I uh, would like to be about who, who is watching it. All I know is that my mum and dad loved it. And that is frankly astonishing because there's so much I do that they don't enjoy. So, that's the, yeah. best, that's the best line I think I've heard all week from anybody. My mom and dad hate so much of what I do. They actually like this Maybe one. So I know. because I'm in it. So, uh, no, it's Are great. they critical of No, you? They're, they're the biggest fans, but it's just really nice to have something that... I just I think its reach is huge. I think that it, uh, because of the way it has uh, the writers have, have uh, realised... It. I feel like we could get an audience that's sort of, you know, any age really upwards from sort of 15, I, I feel mm. like. Uh, and I, I think it's important that that does happen. I don't want it just to be for the, the cool young dudes because, you know, that's sort of um, um, missing the point because it's relevant to all of us, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if we're going to have debates about this kind of subject, it needs to happen now, really. You know, Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk are kind of saying it's already too late, so we need to start and soon. So it's good to make something thrilling and engaging and entertaining that also makes people talk about it afterwards. I love this cast, by the way. William Hurt, I mean, that dude's he's out, of, he, he's out of his mind good. Yeah. Like, it's so good, and Gemma's great in this. Talk to me about this cast you're working with. They're so great. Yeah, it's nice not yeah. to have a weak link, isn't it? It's, yeah. just, it's great to look at yeah. it in everybody's yeah, somebody under the bus. Yeah. Like, this yeah. person sucks. Yeah, no. the only problem is, you know, you sit there and go, oh, maybe, maybe the weak link's <laughs> more. Um, I was uh, uh, disappointed not to actually get to act with uh, William Hurt because yeah. he's so good and uh, um, I love his uh, storyline. I think it's so touching and... Um, because we really do see a relationship with a robot where there is... And a dependency yep. from human to machine. And and also all that uh, that storyline, but sort of the nanny state kind of taking control. I think that would be very interesting to sort of uh, our, my parents' generation without even thinking it's to do with robots. It's the government sort of being in charge of, you know, it's putting the price of cigarettes up and stuff like that. So it's sort of, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Congrats, <laughs> congrats, guys! It's really, like I said, the first two episodes, I really enjoyed it. You know, you you walk into these types of shows and you're like, oh, another robot show. <laughs> this one really just had such heart to it because it's not about the AI part of it. It really is just about the the human, the frailty of human society and relationships and how we are less connected. So it's pretty cool.